Well, let's hope the focus is working. My uh, phone was insisting on focusing on all the trees back here and not on my face. And I think I might have figured out something to make it work. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Um, anyways, Happy New Year! It's 2024. And this will be my second year drinking the Talking Cedar Raspberry Grisette. Yes, I already opened this. Oh, look at that head. That beer's excited to see me. <laughs> or to be let out, as the case may be. There we go. So, the Talking Cedar Raspberry Grisette, uh, it is, what, maybe about 18 months old at this point. Uh, I drank it last year on New Year's. It is a bottle-conditioned Grisette. A Grisette is a member of the uh, family of farmhouse ales, common to the French and Belgium, uh, common to France and Belgium. Uh, in particular, the Grisette is common to the mining towns of Belgium, or is, is historically from the mining towns of Belgium. Uh, its other sister beers would be the uh, Saison and um, I can't remember what the others are, uh, but generally uh, lowbrow, historically lowbrow beers made by farmers or um, yeah, farmers usually, farmhouse ale, made by the people from the products they have in the region in order to, uh, you know, make beer because that's what a lot of people did in the past. Um, it was healthy, it was safer, and also it carried nutrients. Beer is liquid bread. So a lot of times you would be uh, feeding, sustaining your employees, your seasonal laborers, or in this case the miners, who are probably less seasonal, with the beer. So grisette means the little gray thing, uh, and so it comes from the, you know, the dust, the rock dust that would be all over miners, I believe is the theory. And yeah, so you would expect a grisette to have a, a character similar to a saison. That is, they are typically wild fermented. That is, that is Britannomyces yeast, typically from that region. Um, though Britannomyces is actually not native to Europe. Um, I read that in a book uh, not terribly long ago. And that was an interesting discovery. I believe they have traced it back to South America and it came back to Europe on trade ships and they of course probably didn't know they were carrying it, but it has created many wonderful things in a European beer tradition. Anyway, so this in particular, Talking Cedar Brewery is a Native American brewery uh, based just a little bit south of me in Centralia. I believe it is an effort of the Chehalis tribe, I believe, I'm pretty sure. And they have partnered with uh, Heritage Distilling and a couple other uh, brewing outfits. And they have a nice brewery there, a nice brew pub, decent restaurant, like actually a really good restaurant. Um, and so I bought these bottles about 18 months ago. I bought three bottles. The bottle specifically says that it is a bottle conditioned beer and it is intended to be cellared for up to three years. So last year it would have been relatively fresh. This year it's about middle-aged. And uh, we'll see what old grisette tastes like next year. Lord willing, and the, Lord willing and the creek don't rise and all that jazz. So just to start with, it smells berry. Um, definitely to the family of the, I don't know what, they, what they're called, but the... The, the berries that have the, the segments, the, the raspberries, blackberries, that kind of thing. Um, not like blueberries, not like strawberries, maybe strawberries. Um, but it doesn't smell specifically raspberry, which might be a good thing, might not be a good thing. Uh, my brother and sister specifically noted when they tried this beer for the first time that to them they felt the, art, the raspberry tasted artificial. But it smells less distinctly raspberry Definitely distinct, distinctly berry. It might be, it might be halfway between raspberry and strawberry. Yeah, there's also a bit of a, a smoky bite 
almost a, a saltiness I'm detecting down further back in the beer. It smells pretty good. It smells bright. It smells uh, not the most vibrant, but there's some vibrancy to it. It's a, a light vibrance. <laughs> yeah, smells good. Um, almost a wheat-like character, kind of that, that smoothness. Um, yeah. Well, let's see how it tastes. It's tart, but not vinegar. Um, definitely tart. So they note on the bottle that as it ages, you should expect um, or the younger beer to be more fruit forward and as it ages for uh, funkiness to kind of come into the, the forefront. Um, I also notice in typical with Saison's and the other farmhouse and wild fermented beers that as they age, the tartness usually amps, um, which is a result of the, the beers drying out. That is the sugars in them being processed by the yeasts and resulting in less sugar, more alcohol, more flavor compounds in there than simply the sugars. Um, and so drying out is to be expected. So next year I'm expecting this to be pretty tart. Um, maybe not the tartest beer I've had, but yeah, we'll see. I'll find out next year. Uh, for now, I think it's a moderate level of tartness. My wife called it bracing, um, but I think I would hold off bracing until it gets to almost vinegar. Um, it's not bracingly tart for me. It's a decently tart, uh, but still recognizably berry fruity. And there is a little bit of that smokiness to the taste as well. Hmm. Yeah, you can hold it in your mouth for a few seconds without without the, the tartness hurting you. Um, it does have a really strong effervescence. I don't know if you noticed when I poured it, but the head was substantial and, and exuberant. Um, and you still have that same level of, of kind of carbonation in your mouth. Not soda pop carbonation, not, you know, fresh Coke into your mouth, but pretty bubbly for a beer. And the bubbles are, are relatively large, which adds to that. So it's not a, a smooth mouthfeel, it's more of a and a live, bubbly kind of uh, texture. The fruitiness um, kind of results in almost a, a wine-like character, dry, slightly fruity. Um, yeah, and there is, I think the wheat is still, or the, the wheat-like character is, is also um, kind of noticeable. I don't know whether these beers are commonly brewed with wheat or what the wheat, uh, level is in the mash bill here, but I would guess there is at least some and probably probably a relatively significant amount of wheat in this to lend its, you know, its particular uh, characteristics to the beer. It's a very celebratory beer, being that you're kind of wine-like and then the, the, the effervescence, it, it has a champagne-like quality, so celebrations, parties, yeah, heck yeah, it'd be perfect for that and fans of champagne um, would probably enjoy it. Because it's not like a hard on dry brute champagne kind of thing, you know, uh, it's not gonna be analogous to a brute champagne to it. Uh, brute, is that what it is? I can't remember. Um, to a, a really, a super dry champagne, but it's approaching that. Um, and so, yeah, that might be a, an audience that might enjoy this and find that as a gateway to more interesting beers. You know, from the snobby drinks like champagnes. <laughs> um, I'm going to say, and to be fair, I did not review my tasting notes from last year before recording this. So I didn't want to like predispose myself. But just based on memory, I believe I like this more a year in than I did a year ago. Um, mainly for it having dried out a bit. Uh, the finish is is pretty clean. It's almost like a like a water uh, finish in your mouth once everything goes away, which I find relatively common with those moderately tart beers. Once they're gone, your mouth has developed some saliva, not a huge amount, but a nice amount, and so that's that's kind of what you're left with in your mouth after you've uh, you know swallowed it down. That's a tasty beer. That's a very good beer. 
Um, I enjoy it quite a lot. I think as it warms, the raspberry becomes more clearly identifiable. And then it takes on this kind of um, uh, half a bottine if you took all the sweetness out of a raspberry soda and maybe um, uh, like the raspberry sparkling water kind of things. Um, uh, you know, that, that kind of, it's halfway in between there. Uh, it has that really clean effervescence of a sparkling water, but the raspberry is more definitely there. And I'm not really picking up uh, the artificial character that, that my brother and sister complained about uh, previously. And so I think just all that taken together, it's kind of in between those. It's, it's almost soda pop-like for a grown-up who likes beer, but it's definitely got more character than a sparkling water. Yeah. And I should probably stop just opining, because I'm probably going to talk myself down an alley I won't know how to get out of. So far I've been lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of lucky, I'm lucky to have this beer. It's a great beer. Good job, Talking Cedar. Keep up the good work. And, uh, yeah, drink local, right? Anyways, this is me, Matthew. I've been chewing the brew, drinking, and enjoying, definitely enjoying, Talking Cedar's Raspberry Grisette from their Wildcraft series. And I will catch y'all on the flip side.